Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now I did want to get this video out sooner to you guys, but this week has been an absolute well and it's been a busy week. And then on Tuesday, which was the 16th, 16th of Jan, um, my car got stolen. Yeah, if you've been following me for a while, you know it's not the first time <laughs> that's happened. But yeah, came back out, car's gone, so it's just thrown my whole week out while I try and get it sorted. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a total loss. They had it away in a couple of minutes. It's just one of them things. But that's why the uh, the video has been delayed. But that out of the way, we're looking at the Spear LT. And we're going to put it together today and build it up. So we've had various bits delivered. So let's get to building this thing. I um, can't remember what side. It's T20 I need. So we're going to get some parts in this thing. Get it ready. Get it set up. And then I'm going to get it chronoed and we'll see what it's doing. Now, there's many of you that didn't like the ASMR style video that I did with the Glock 17. So I might do some videos with me talking over it. Some videos in that style. Just you can sit back, relax and watch me uh, build stuff. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, comment down below. Do you prefer me talking over while I do it? Or do you like a little bit of a relaxing backing track and a bit of ASMR and me just doing it and you just following along? So head down to the comments right now, and I mean right now, and uh, and let me know. And that could, you know, point the channel in a different direction. So it is super important. So I'm going to get this thing apart. It's going to be very similar to the Rattler. Uh, need a size up for that. So we need a 25, T25. And we kind of know how to build it now because we've already done the Rattler. So we'll take, we took the handguard off, split the receiver. You don't have to do this in this order. You know, you could put the grip and, and sort the lower out first. <clears throat> I think it's just maybe worth getting the barrel. And, oh, almost lost the bolt off the end of the bench there. Uh, it might just be worth getting the barrel done first. So we'll strip that apart. We have the barrel here. It goes in a certain way. You can follow along if you wish. I'm not gonna fit the steel parts just yet. And just to clarify, because Toxicant did say, the steel parts they sent me are, I think, something that you can buy. I mean, it comes all on the rifle anyway, but if you want steel bits, you can buy them separately or contact Toxicant, I'm not too sure. I think that was just a bit of an exclusive for me because I've covered, you know, their stuff on video and it does help them I'm very much you know aware that it does and it's nice to get a little bit back so we won't be doing the steel bits today because I want to build the rifle as you would when you receive it just as everything you get out the box so we'll just grab the bits that we need here and so many people have jumped onto my other video this is not a spear LT you know this that and the other it is a spear LT um, but this is the CSAW CSAW, yeah, yeah, close support assault weapon or something like that. Um, it's a very specific setup, and I will overlay images from Grantham's thing that he did on the Spear LT. So, the I think the civilian spec um, Spear LT, you get a ambi bolt release on the other side, so you get a little release here. The lower is a little bit different, but this CSAW in its real format is a ten and a half inch barrel. Yes, they do one. Um, and it's specced with that lower and I'll put a picture up of him firing it and I imagine the real one is you know fully auto capable um, but there's reference images that I looked at it's very it's not going to be a one-to-one -one because I imagine they don't get this you know over um, in Hong Kong or wherever they are uh, I can't imagine getting the CSAW is an easy thing so it's as close to that as possible. I've looked at references in terms of the size, the handguard, how the gas adjuster um, sticks out, where the barrel sits, and it is very, very close. So it is a Spear LT, it's a CSAW, it's Charity 556 on the real one. Um, and yeah, I'm just getting that out of the way because there's a lot of people that, you know, are probably getting a bit, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, getting it a bit twisted, getting a bit um, confused. If you buy any of the other Spear LTs from Toxicant, they'll come with the ambi bolt release. They'll come in various different barrel lengths. 
so that is where we are so we're going to get to build this thing so we're going to fit the hop and barrel and everything and for the barrel and the hop um, i've ordered a 250 mil which might be the right size might not be we'll find out together i've gone with the prometheus mws stainless barrel it does have a cutout where you would swap it with your tmmws and put the little o-ring on the end but we don't have one because we're putting it into a brand new um, replica flamingo 60 booking we're going to fit the parts that come in the kit because that's what you will have and then later down the line if i decide to fit a different hop unit whatever i'll cover it on the video so we'll take this out here we've got all these little bits i'll try and remember from the last video how i did this because <laughs> you know um i'm not going to go back and watch it we're just going to we're just going to send it we're just going to we're going to go for it so you do get hot rubber in the packaging i'm not going to be using that hot rubber i'm going to be using a flamingo we get this little bracket you'll see on this little bracket the hole is off center so i just need to check if it's so you want the hole sitting you want the center hole let me sort this camera out you want the center hole sitting closer to the top than the bottom when you install it right Got all these different bits to fit here let's get the flamingo booking out um everyone that i that have, has done the same setup as me and they've used the flamingos with the titan nubs i do need to grab a titan nub um i've had great results so plus that on the feedback for it so let me go grab a titan nub and we'll carry on so of all the things that i got ready this was the only thing that i didn't have ready so hop rubber on the barrel we're going to fit that into the hop unit like so we can put the titan nub in if i don't drop it i'll try to remember to look at the uh, phone screen and get this all in focus for you it does i do go off camera sometimes and i do have things out of focus i apologize it's uh when you're trying to do it as you're filming it it can be a little bit awkward so we'll fit this together like that clamp it down got an o-ring here i think there's just a one o-ring I imagine is the one that goes over the hop unit so you pull that if you can just over the two shells like that and it holds the hop unit together they don't give you a hop uh a hop rubber they don't give you an o-ring that sits on the front of the hop unit over the barrel um which is normally what you get on an mws but that doesn't matter so i haven't had any problems so far with the rattler now someone did say make sure you go ahead and lock tight some of the stuff so it doesn't come loose due to the blowback action now i will do that um of course just i like to get these videos done and out to you guys so if you you know waiting to build yours you can get it done so you've got a little screw there for the wheel so what we're going to do we'll put the wheel on we can slide the hot the arm in after so wheel on little screw if you want to sit on there properly doesn't let's get it on the screwdriver so you put the wheel on there like that so you've got the little cammed section on the inside face and then line that screw up and screw it down like that and then we're just gonna slightly torque it down and you'll see it spins freely but once we get the spring and the detent on the side that will disappear put this in it only goes in one way like so and then we put the thicker o-ring behind that as like a buffer and then we'll just poke that down into the channel so it's flush once we've got that on there you can see the cam section on the rear 
hope this is clear for you guys and that will sit in there like so and then that uh, pin that sits on the back sits in the cam section and then as you rotate it more hop less hop so we're going to hold that there for now because <coughs> we're going to have to slide this in like that what we could do is we could put the spring and detent in and get that ready let's do that so we'll just the way I do it remember you want the hole close to the top and then you want to put the arm in slide it in and that that being the top the arm comes down at the bottom we'll flip it over and we'll prep the little spring and detent try not to drop these and lose them because they are important like that and the way I do it is I just push it on like that push it slightly into the body so it stops it from springing out you might need like a little flathead or something to sit it in its little recess and then we slide that on there like that and we want to hold it or not not disturb it because if that drops out and that spring pings across the room um it's not a good day they have put two screws in to hold that in place so i imagine one is just a spare now they do have they do have different holes so let's see that's too big. So we've got a 1.5 and a 1.5, so they both fit. Let's get a magnet to see what their makeup is. I have a magnet over here. I imagine they're both steel. They're just slightly different colours. So what we'll do, we'll take one, we'll set it aside as a spare. So we've got that screw ready because we're going to need it. <coughs> We have the barrel assembly here. We want to slide in. <clears throat> Excuse me, I keep coughing because I spat my dinner up earlier. Push it in. You'll see it sits a little bit out. Now where I got stuck with the rattler is I had the flash hider on. The barrel was a bit too long, so you just want to. It will push in the rest of the way like that, and you'll see. It sort of sits flush with the feed ramp so it sort of sits in line with that now a 250 mil barrel for a 10 and a half inch spear lt is a perfect size that's not to say if you've got 11 and a half inch or a 16 inch you can't fit this barrel um, especially if you're worrying about how powerful the gun is and you don't want to fit like a 317 or 16 inch um, that's in we're going to take the adjuster and we're gonna that arm has to sit underneath the hop arm and we're gonna hopefully hold that in place while we take this screw and it is a bit of a pain to do because it's got a long thread on it and we just need to thread it in to the hop adjuster So it has to go through that hole and it has to go into the adjuster so you'll have to line up the thread like so and then screw it all the way in. we might skip this i'll skip this part because it's literally just screwed in a thing and if you're using an allen key like this you have to be going quite a few times so i'll do that and i'll come back so i'm just on the last couple of turns here and we're just going to nip that up and this is what the other user was saying, just thread lock that in so this doesn't come loose. And I imagine his bolt has come forward and just smashed into that and broke it. So I'll come back in and do that in my own time because I might be changing stuff or something like that. So before I take it out on the field, I'll of course do that. Now with the hop adjusters, so let's say your barrel's pointing that way, you've got your gun upside down, you wanna, you wanna change it. If you roll the wheel towards the stock, that's more hop push it towards the flash hider that way it adds or it decreases the hop so that's your barrel and hop setup 
It's a 1.5 millimeter Allen key for that little screw. Now we've done that, we can take it, we have to slide that hot block in at the front here because you'll see it indexes with the receiver. And if you try and put it in like this, you're gonna break it. So you have to put it at the front, slide it in. It should be easy to do, so you won't need to force it. We put that on there, flip this round. We use our T25, they're numbered. Again, I'll be coming back and just making sure these um, toxicant, if you are listening to this video, just let us know what the torque specs are. Um, just so I can talk it down correctly or do you just give it one of your mental clicks where you just like turn it and you're like click click talked up so that's all there set up once that's in we don't need to mess with this um, I will be taking one of these bolts apart on a different video is a little bit sticky. And of course, there's no grease or anything on the rollers. Someone did question um, the rollers and how good they are. If that becomes a problem part, I can always get them made out of something strong like titanium or stainless. The top ones won't come off because they're held in by a C-clip, but the bottom ones can slide off like that when they're in the gun they can't but they can when it's out so just be careful of that slide this into the upper set that to one side now we're going to take a look at the lower we're going to flip it upside down in our bag of tricks here we've got the spring and detent for the rear pin so we're going to take the rear pin with the slot and the, the divot sections pointing upwards which would be towards the bottom of the rifle gonna take our pin we've got a sort of straightish end got a little nib there from the machine process and then we've got a pointy end so pointy end down we'll take our spring pop that in there you're gonna take your nut for you pistol grip and you're going to slide that into the cavity on the bottom of the lower and with that all in place you're just going to rot you can rotate the pin if you like just to make sure that that's in place you're going to take our grip and the way you want to apply pressure to this is if you hold that nut in you want to go in and because you've got that spring there you want to push it straight down so it will go, it should go on. Might be a tight fit. Let me just see what I'm doing here. There we go. You'll see I caught the spring there. So we're just gonna make sure that's, this face is pushed to the front and then we're gonna push straight down so we don't snag the spring. We'll just test the pin. That works. Uh, the screw comes with it. The screw is, I think it's a three mil. Uh, is this a three mil? This might be a 3.5. It could be a 3.5, don't quote me on that because these no longer have the numbers on, but it's metric. And we're gonna put the screw in, bear with me. That little nut can slide in that channel. So just tilt the gun this way or the lower this way and that nut will slide into place once it slides into place we tighten it down once we get it so far I'm just going to put something through here like this just to get a bit more torque on it we'll just tighten it we don't want to over tighten it but you should just use your instinct to know obviously that's quite tight so we'll leave it there once that's done, pop the cap down. Boom, there we go. It's not something you're gonna access quickly, but this grip, oh, look, I really do like this grip. It's really nice and comfy, so I don't think I'll be changing that. Now, we're not gonna have an issue with the barrel, much like we had on the Rattler. 
um, with the standard Rattler flash hider. So we can just, it's just in front of the, the thread, 250 mil. It's perfect for your 10 and a half, 11 and a half inch barrels. I'm gonna put the flash hider on. I am gonna use got an adjustable wrench here. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of torque. I'll come back and remove all this anyway, just so it doesn't come loose when we try and fit the suppressor. Not having to put much torque on that at all. I'm gonna slide the upper into position. Now we are going to have to put the handguard on first because the handguard slides into the slot. So we can slide that over. When I come back in, like I've said, I'll also be um, thread locking all the various bits to stop them coming loose. Because this is a gas blowback at the end of the day. Yes, you're not shooting real stuff, but still, it's gonna vibrate with the blowback action. Oh, the receiver fit on this one is absolutely spot on. Well done, Toxicant. This might be a long video, guys. I'm gonna try and keep it as short as possible. We're just gonna set it up. So the, the rifle's built now. It's ready to fire if we put a magazine in. I have a stock. This is the VFC one, which is found on like the AGs and stuff. I bought this from JK Army. They sent me some stickers, John Wick sticker and a JK Army sticker. People say, sometimes say that they have issues with JK Army, but every time I've ordered, they've been pretty spot on. So can't complain at all. Now, even though this is a different brand stock, it goes on pretty damn well and the little notches line up really well with the receiver. So that is excellent. It's a four mil Allen screw. So we're just gonna tighten this up here. Again, I'll be coming in with this with a torque wrench just to give it a bit more on there. So we've got stock on there. So now, I'm gonna knock all the suppressors over. Now it's beginning to look like it should. Bolts really nice and smooth. Selector. You have to have it cocked to put it in safe, guys. Don't try and force it. See, it's not cocked, won't go in safe. Don't force it at all. So we've got a nice stock on there. A SIG stock, I wanted to go with a SIG stock. It's got six hour markers on it as well. We can fold it, we can unfold it. I think someone had a go at me for how I did this stock in one of the videos. I think it was on the MPX maybe, or the Rattler, I can't quite remember. Uh, we've got a button on here, so we can extend it, which is great. So we've got a folding extendable stock. You could fit any type of wrist style stock, folding stock, whatever you want on there. So first thing I want to do, I want to put some iron sights on it. Because it's always good to have a backup. And I think iron sights on most rifles just they fill the empty space. So these are PTS um, folding sights that are really good. They're probably the best airsoft iron sights I've found. They're just built really well. I do need to put the screws in the handguard, don't worry. I'm just gonna slide this on. Line it up. Like that screw in there like I say and I'll, I'll probably say it many times in the video guys I do apologize but if you're liking me talking over it while I do it let me know in the comments down below if you'd rather sit back relax to some soothing chill music and just watch me put all this stuff on without babbling because I do babble a fair bit don't I let me know down below perhaps we could do both you know and just mix it up a bit if it doesn't require as much explanation like the Glock didn't because you know it's a platform that's been out for a while we can do it for something like that where this where it's new there's probably not tons of informative you know spoken over videos out there and we can do it for something like that so iron sights you'll see does transform it we're not going to be using iron sights though i'm going to be using a holosun uh, this is the 503 cugr 
which is a green dot. So let's get this turned on here. Might not be able to see this. Might have to turn it up. So it's a green dot. And it's one of these ones where you can change it. So I can have a circle and a dot. Or just a dot. I normally prefer red, but when I bought this one, um, I got on with it. It was the one they only had it in stock, so I thought I'll try buy it and try it. It's got light detection, everything on it. It's a really good um, red dot, actually. So we're going to use this Holosun. Uh, with the Holosun, I'll be using a magnifier because it's going to be my battle rifle. I'll be going into rooms, doing CQB, and then flipping it back in when I'm engaging at longer distances because I plan to use this you know, weekend events, mill sims, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to put the screws on the handguard just before I forget and it slides off and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. T20. I don't think I'll be fitting a forward grip on this. I'm going to keep it nice and sleek. So that's on. Um, optic. Where would I normally run it? I'd probably normally run it run it about there, I think. Yeah. So the Holosum requires a T9. If I can find the blooming T9. What do I do with the T9? T8. Ah, it's gonna have eluded me. I don't know where it's gone. Is that over there? Presses over again. I really need to put them somewhere. It's not that one. What have I done with that T9? It's probably right in front of me and I can't see it because I've got such a messy bench. There with T9. It was right in front of me. It was just hidden under something else. I have got the proper Hollison tools somewhere, but strap that on. We've got a Hollison magnifier. I tend to put it's got a quick detach. So I tend to put it on and then just do a couple of clicks on the screw because I don't want it being floppy. So we've got red dot, magnified. I do like real optics so much better. Let's pop something under there so it doesn't want to fall over. So we've got that stuff on. What are we going to do next? So we've got the SIG suppressor. So that is something I bought from Toxicant to go with this. It looks fantastic. And yeah, it's how it's how you run it, wouldn't it? Uh, with that, what else have we got? This is a little engal. Let's put the engal on there. It wants to fit. It's not wanting to fit. There we go. Engal, flathead screwdriver. So this will give me visible and IR laser. This was purchased from Empire Airsoft. We flip that over. Now I needed a torch to go with it. So um, I went cheap with it just because I'm not spending, you know, three, 400 pound, 500 pound plus on each rifle. So I do have some nice lights, but I wanted this Surefire to look the part and I wasn't gonna go buy another real one, so. I think one real surefire is enough. Now, as well as the surefire, I've got the Arasaka mount. Now, this stuff I just bought from AliExpress. I think it came from Element or Watson. I can't remember. Really can't remember. What's on there? I think it's Watson. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to strip the normal side mount off with 2 mil. I've got 2 mil. So it's a couple of screws, one, two, I fitted the same tack light setup on the Noveski, double eagle Noveski M4, loose this screw, that comes off, and then we can use this Arasaka mount, why would you use this Arasaka mount, well it's uh, M-lock, and it also situates the light 
slightly forward so you don't get as much shadowing on the suppressor. Um, you could fit it all the way out here if you wanted to, which is fine, or you could sit it back here. Either way, if you have a torch here, you get a lot of shadow off the suppressor when you're using it indoors, and I wanted to avoid that. Now, the only annoying thing about these lights and brackets, it comes with the screws. Now, the tan one that I did, the screws fit the threads, but they don't go in nowhere near far enough, so they're absolutely useless. So what I actually did is I borrowed some torque screws with some little cap screws these are actually off the mtr 16 handguard but anything the same thread will work it's just what i found so we'll put the small machine screws in the mount we'll thread the m-locks on and these torches i fitted one at the uh, double eagle noveski n4 and it's it's actually a really good torch <laughs> You know, for, for the, the, the tiny amount that it cost, I think it was like 30 something pound or similar. Um, I was really surprised with it, so I bought one for the uh, MCX as well. So we put them two screws on just so it's ready. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna go for the middle mount. I'm gonna pop these screws in. Again, there's loads of different types of screws that would work. The screws that came with it would work if I went into the garage and just chopped them down, but I just can't be bothered to do that. It's a T25. So thread these in. Place the mount. And then I'm gonna torque these down and I will, again, just disclaimer wise, I will come back in and torque these up. And I have to loosen the m -lock screws. I think I like it there. I don't want it pointing don't want it sort of shoved out too far. Let me just fix this on because it's going to be difficult on camera. So just normal M-lock mounting stuff. You do it correctly and it doesn't fall off straight away. Like that. We're going to pull the cap off. Sorry guys, I'm doing this out of frame, but if it's in frame, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just putting the M-lock on just so I can see behind the rail to make sure they've grabbed the M-lock because there's nothing worse than tightening an M-lock slot down and it hasn't gone all the way through the rail and they end up marring your rail up so we'll put the cap back on I won't be using the pressure switch that comes with this uh, I did use it on the Noveski but I'll be using a dual switch so I need to find one where I've got like two buttons on the one side. And that's nice, the torch. The uh, the flashlight's out of the way. It sits just above the suppressor, so it's, it's gonna decrease the amount of shadow I get off the suppressor. And it looks cool. I think it's slightly off center. It's just, it could be the, uh, the way the handguard is. If I need to move this slightly more forward, I can do. This is what you get for uh, Chinese parts. I could get a real Arasaka mount, to be honest. I might do, because they're not expensive. I think like 30 quid for a real Arasaka mount. Maybe 30 to 50 pound, not too sure. And it will have better grab and fixings in these but I just thought I'd try the cheap one see what it's like if it's good I'm gonna just get the real one so these take two CR123 batteries and you can choose to have the proper tradies on there rather than Watson and that is that so I'll have a dual switch that comes out here I'll clean it up with some little brackets to route the wires in and then I'll have a dual pressure switch on this side and my hand just sits perfectly on that rail. Let me zoom you slightly out here on a messy bench. You see the bench is absolutely atrocious, but that's how I've got the Spear LT set up. It's a nice weight, it's really not too heavy at all. It's quite light. Got a P mag. And that's how I'm gonna run it. How cool does that look? 
Oof, this might end up being one of my favorite rifles. So we've got MCX Spear LT, CSAW, and then we've also got the Rattler. Now the Rattler stock does stick out much further in its shortest configuration, but I mean, with the stock, if you have the stock collapsed on the 10.5, um, and you line the stocks up with the suppressor choices I've got the rifles are actually pretty much the same overall length um, Of course if you're doing CQV you can fold the stocks in and really get around the corners And I think these guns look great with P mags in And just as a sweetener before we go because it's running into a long video I've got a TM mag And I've got a P mag now. Let me get some rounds in these we'll go back to the one times Get some rounds in these and we'll quickly crow and see what's going on. So, got some rounds in the mags. I've actually got a box set up there so I can do it on camera. I've got the chrono here. It's already set up to 0.3s, which we've got in the mags. They're both filled to the brim with propane, or should be. Standard TM MWS mag first. For chrono purposes, I'm going to take the suppressor off because it will space the reading out, you know, three or four inches. So we've got a standard TM mag. Let's put some rounds through it. Did I cock it? I don't think I cocked it, but that would help. <laughs> right. At a point three, we are bang on a jewel. Just do a burst of full auto. The last round came out a bit weird there, but they were all pretty much one jewel. Just the last one was weird. So, standard TM mag. We've locked back on empty. PM mag, guns modify. The only PM mag that you should be using, in my opinion. One jewel. 1.1 jewels. 281. Put some more rounds through it. So snappy. 1.1 joules. See if we can crowd it. Let's see if we can do a burst. We might not be able to do a burst, but let's see. Yeah. Well, we've locked back, but we've got one round. We've got a round left. Now I have experienced this every now and again with the P mags. Might just be one left, so let's see. Yeah, just one round left. Just sometimes they can trip the empty mag detection. On. In, in normal MWS is absolutely fine just sometimes with the, with the different bodies they'll take a bit just getting used to maybe the bodies pinch them a little bit but the TM mag works the P mag works with about one joule one joule 1.1 on the P mag um, and lock back on empty each time this gun is so flipping snappy the, the fit on the P mag tiny bit of movement you want a little bit because you know, ramming it in and keeping it solid might cause you an issue. MWS mag has the same play. But the uh, Spear LT, in fact, it should be similar, but got the Rattler here. Both guns are empty, so we've got the Rattler. and snappy locks back and then of course what you guys are coming here to see the spear lt it's just the trigger's super crisp the blowback ap action is super crisp let's go to the trigger let's see what's going on so it's cut ready to go got a tiny bit of take up we hit the wall release reset is right on the wall so very very good the rattler was good the spear lt <sighs> phenomenal i might get a spear lt in a different barrel barrel size if you guys want that let me know um if toxic want me doing more videos they're just going to have to start sending me some more bits they did send me a little 25 dollar gift card which was nice of them um to spend on the store but you know i think i'll constantly add to this collection with the uh, mcx line that they do Thank you very much for tuning this into this really long video. I do apologize, but from me and Bench, as always, we'll see you in the next one.